Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are gonna be continuing upgrading this awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. I recently tweeted on Twitter that I found that Lenovo um, they're sponsoring a race car and they had written an article about this race car and um, they just happened to uh, to tell that they were using this Lenovo X3650 Model 5 for some software defined storage uh, for this racing team and um, yeah that kind of got me off to um, I better go and upgrade mine as well so that um, so that I can get on with that project now that uh, this awesome server is good enough for a racing team well it might just be good enough for me too so I ordered a part and for uh, this part I have to be very thankful for my patrons they sponsored this and um, yeah first of the month is not a good for me because that's when the patrons get uh, their bill and some of them jump ship and uh, so it looks really bad at the at the start of the month but well I usually end in a little plus at the end of the month so um, yeah thank you patrons um, this is a riser card model 5 so um, so let's have a good look at this so this came from a local computer broker here in Denmark one that I am negotiating with if um, if they want to do something together with me to um, to promote some stuff um, which is really odd I, I would think that when someone came and asked if um, if they wanted to work with someone like me they would jump to get to do that but but that's definitely not how it actually goes so yeah uh, very well wrapped oh it's a ritually noble packaging um, I bought this it was listed as new but opened so it doesn't really look like it has been opened but maybe it has been has been opened oh it says what this is this is nice this is the 00KA504 system x3650 model 5 PCIe Express and it has one x16 and it has one x8 but it's um, it's a special one so we'll have to uh, check oh it has it has another label here uh, kind of the same thing very nice these are not expensive at all it's just um, I was so lucky that they had one um, when I looked at this the first time they had two and I, I was actually gonna get both of them but this time they only had one so I, I'm getting this one um, but this one is a really interesting one so that's a that's a win we get some kind of a um, whatever this is usually not important at all warranty and licensing information um, anything from a Lenovo box like this that is meant to go in a server like this well the the warranty of the server will cover uh, this part so if I put in this part today and it breaks tomorrow well um, it's covered by the server's warranty as I understand it, it this just looks like it has been out of the box so, yeah Maybe not. Oh. So here it is. It's a riser card. Um, nothing really special on the at first glance. But we will um, we'll have a look at that. I think we should go and visit the computer, and I'll um, I'll show you how to get to one of these. When I have to find something out about a Lenovo server, I go to Lenovo Press. Press. There. And we can see that I have been using the Lenovo Press X3650 Model 5 quite a lot. So I picked that one. Here we'll see that there is two versions of this server. There is 5462 and there is the 8871. The 5462 is the previous version of this server. Let's just open that in a new tab. And that was able to use the E5 2600 version 3 of the Intel CPUs, whereas the 8871 is able to use the E5 2600 version 4. 
and this is the one I have, which I'm very, very happy about. So, um, when we need to know something about this server, uh, we go in here. And there is this very awesome list of different subjects out here. So we are going to be um, messing with the IO, I believe that's IO, IO expansion. So here we get a nice little overview of what the back of this server looks like and what sort of different options we have. There is two riser cards available in this server, riser card 1 and riser card 2. Riser card 2 is only available if you have both of the CPUs installed in the server. If you're just running one CPU, well, you have riser card 1 available and you have, um, I don't know if you have both of these. Okay, it says it's here. Slot 5, 6, 7 and 8 requires the second processor to be installed. So there is two half height or small form factor, low profile uh, cards on the system board where you can use number 4 here with the first CPU and number 5, 6, 7 and 8 only with the second CPU. There is another weird thing that is this slot over here, number 3. It says PCIe FH-LH or ML2 and this ML2 that's uh, kind of the Maslin card. It's a special card that is made to only fit with Lenovo servers. Other brands has the same thing. They just call it something else. I specifically know that HP calls those Flexlom, but that's another matter. This is the different cards that are available. These four are the riser cards available for riser one. And riser one was the first one that goes with the first CPU or processor. And we have these four options. And if we look very closely, we'll see that the two last options are the same as the two options that are available for riser card number two. So what's why is there four up here? Well, it just happens that two of them has this ML2 slot, these two and the second two does not have that slot. And as you can put an ML2 in the second slot, well, it's only available in the first slot. The one I have is that one, 00KA504. And as you saw, this has a 1X16, like a PCI Express X16, and it has 1X8, ML2. And that's that special card that is um, only available for this server and most likely for some other Lenovo servers as well. I haven't checked that. If we go further down just a little bit, we actually get into the networking cards and we will see here that we have some ML2 cards. We can get a 40 gigabit ML2. There is no 100 gigabits InfiniBands in ML2. There is 40 gigabits InfiniBand. Um, I have actually gone ahead and I have ordered a 10 gigabit Ethernet for this port. I believe it's this one and that should be on its way from the United States. And to use this ML2 card in my server, I need the ML2 options in the riser card as well to be able to use this slot down here. So why is this ML lower ML2 X8 special? Well, it comes, they have made it special. I think it's because of pricing. If it doesn't fit with anything else, they can sell it cheaper. Like um, this is a regular 10 gigabit ethernet card. And well, they can't really go ahead and sell this cheaper to Lenovo and have a higher price to another vendor. But if this card will only work in a Lenovo server, well, no one can really get mad about that. And it just happens to be so. If you see this slot, uh, there is no chance in hell that that's gonna fit there. See, the slot is way in, would not go to the end of it. Plus, they have made it special so that it's not a regular slot, it's a special slot. So you have to get those special ML2 cards, but it just happens to be so lucky that as they don't fit in anything else, if they hit the market, well, they're usually not that expensive. I got a 
I got a 10 gigabit ML2 card for my server for about $50 and then there is all the shipping and the import tax but well the first $50 was was those and um, the top one is of course uh, what we can use to install a graphics card and that should be regular so how do we do this ah okay violence so we can take those out and we oh, we have a graphics card right there it could be a big beefy um, nvidia grid card that we could install in there That looks rather great. Looks very expensive, right? Da, da, da. Let's try and install this in the server. I was not really planning to put the grid card in here. Uh, this is... Oh. You might have seen this grid card. I have made s several videos on it. It has a broken core. Uh, this is a grid K1 card. Uh, it says it up here. NVIDIA grid K1. And it, it has four processors and at least one of them is broken. It still kind of works-ish. But the card that I really miss is this FirePro Graphics. It's an AMD professional card. And this card just happens to work perfectly well with my editing software. So um, if I could have that in my server and get it to work and pass it through to the editing machine, I could um, I could really get some performance out of that so uh, we are gonna try and put that in but yeah let's go to the server I have turned it off so here we are great view into the server down here oh you can almost not see that yeah you can see it there is the riser car uh, slot to put that in and over here is the second one in the middle are those two um, we can just take this out this is an HBA for the Hewlett Packard disk shelf project that is not going very well um, but it's it's in there so, and it's doing fine it, I was able to pass this through to a virtual machine and um, yeah so we take out this um, piece of metal on the back and our Oh, that's smart. There are the screws to fasten the the PCI cards. That's uh, that's brilliant, right there. Hmm. Thank you. Good thinking. Um. So my network card is coming, and it's going to be installed here as well, in the bottom. And when that network card comes, we will install that in this slot. That's going to be very exciting. But let's put in the graphics card. I see that the power cord is right there so let's put this beefy card in well it's not that beefy it's it's actually just one slot wide but um, it's a really good card for what I'm using it for um, it's not a good card for everything but for my editing software it's brilliant there we are and this and this goes down locks into place and let's get one of these fillers back in my AMD graphics card is firmly installed awesome so let's see if it will fit that would be nice um, I am surely hoping There, cable way disappear. So, installed riser card and a graphics card. So, I installed the power cord right down here. It's um, what is that? It's an eight pin that is converted to a six pin. Is that right? Then I could have used a smaller one. That was stupid. But never mind. We'll do that next time. Um, yeah and if the second CPU were installed I would be able to do the same thing over here put a riser card here and um, have more cards available over here but right now we have HBA we have the graphics card 
and we are getting a 10 gigabit or oh, dual port 10 gigabit network card to put in here as well um, they have shipped it they say so there are also some information here on the cover about the different riser cards uh, we have to be um, mindful that we are only able to supply 25 watts of power in those which is less than normal I am um, surprised about that so here we are the trusty Lenovo X3650 model 5 has booted and has entered prop smocks so um, I want to show you at the computer here are the computer well I haven't started my virtual machine here yet but if I go in and I want to add something to the hardware configuration you can kind of see right down here I have a PCI device that's the HPA that I have passed through to this machine um, I would not be I would not be passing through that graphics card to this machine but I want to show you that it's actually there so a PCI device we have to pick something we are out of framing there and if we go down here we can see that that graphics card is right there the fire pro v7900 and it's this chipset which is absolutely marvelous because that's the best chipset for my uh, video rendering so awesome so that worked that was great i did just for fun and giggles go through these papers there's warranty stuff and there is actually a piece of paper on here, um, very spare some on, on this. Uh, it's just one page. Um, you don't need that, you watch my videos. So um, yeah, and here are some important notes. It's probably all the danger, danger. But apparently there are four different riser cards available for the X3650 Model 5. Two of them are with this ML2 connector. The one I got is the one that has the X16 slot at the top and the ML2 connector at the bottom. There is also a... Um, well, the other riser is with two X8 slots and then an X8 ML2 connector at the bottom. And the two riser cards without the ML is kind of just normal riser cards where the all the slots are located so normal cards like this one will fit in there very nicely so again thank you very much to my patreon for sponsoring this video kind of thank you if you're not already a patron well i do post some more personal stuff over there like me moving and um, well this ceiling project out here that you are not seeing <laughs> so um yeah that is an option um Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.